It's time to plant my tulips. I usually do this around Christmas time, but the tulips bloom so early here, I wanted to experiment with waiting an extra month before planting them. Now, hopefully you watched my bulb video in the fall. I'll link that right up here and you have these ready. But if not, you'll know now what to do this coming fall. So the first thing we had to do is give the bulbs a check in the refrigerator and see how our experiment worked. So what I did was I took uh, the, the tulip bulbs, I left some in the bag they came in, and some I put in some damp vermiculite. The problem I've had is that when I put them in the fridge, they have to be in there for about eight weeks, eight to 12 weeks, and they can dry out and shrivel up. I had to throw away several last year that were like that. So I thought, well, maybe putting them in here in damp vermiculite would keep them plump. And, whoa, not only are they plump, but they've already started to grow roots, and we've got some sprouts here. Now, now, a few of these have a little bit of mold on them. We'll see if that works. But ultimately they are, you know, very uh, plump, firm. So those should be good. Now let's check these out that are in the bag. Now we do have some sprouts on some. I don't see any roots in here, but this is what I was talking about as far as dehydrated bulbs. Uh, that is most, that's not going to work. It's very crispy. So I'm going to toss that one. But for the most part, they look good. There are more dehydrated ones here. So we've got the mold issue on the other one and we've got dehydration here. So we will see which one works best. So why the fridge? If you're in zone eight and above, uh, they, tulips need winter chill. And in zone eight and above, they just don't get enough of those cold temperatures to really produce good flowers the following spring. And so a lot of times, if you don't have a cold enough winter or you don't pre-chill your bulbs, they may not flower at all. And if they do, the flowers could be right above soil level, buried in the leaves. And you wanna make sure you give them a good uh, eight to 12 weeks in the refrigerator. In the crisper drawer, preferably, and you don't want any other fruits in there because they will spoil the tulip bulbs. So the next question might be, why in pots? Um, for me, I have a gopher issue here. If you've been watching me, you know that. And so the gophers will not eat daffodils, muscari, uh, crocus, but they will eat tulip bulbs. And so putting them in a pot like this just gets them out of the ground. So <laughs> there's no way the gopher is gonna be able to get them. If you have deer issues, uh, you can plant them in pots, keep them up near the house, maybe on the porch or something, and the deer are less likely to go up there and you know eat them. And the next thing is, because in most places, most tulips will not perennialize and return year after year. And so this just makes it real easy to dump them in the trash when the season is over and they're all bloomed out. Let me know in the comments if you grow your tulips in the ground or in pots, or if you've never grown tulips before. All right, so now it's time to talk about what they need in a pot in order to be successful. The first thing they need is excellent drainage. Now you want well-draining potting soil. If you get a lot of rain through the winter, then you might wanna add some extra uh, perlite to your mix just to increase the drainage. And you need a hole or holes in the bottom of the pot for drainage. But we want to cover that a bit because we don't want all the potting soil to run out the hole, especially if it's a big one like this. And so you can take a piece of broken pottery, place it over the hole. You can take some gravel, put it in the pot. You don't even have to cover the whole bottom of the pot, just kind of mound it over uh, the hole. Pot size is somewhat important as well. You want a pot that has a good enough width, so maybe 12 to 15 inches across. Um, this is okay too. This is getting a little bit deep versus wide. Uh, it would work. So this one's gonna work really nicely because we can fit a few layers in here and have a nice wide top. Tulips like to be buried about seven inches deep. Now, it's not gonna hurt them to be buried a little more. So if you have a deeper pot like this, uh, that's okay. You just wanna put about two inches of potting soil in the bottom of the pot. Okay. Now, a great thing about tulips, uh, especially in pots, is you can grow tulips in old potting mix. 
as long as it wasn't used for tulips in the past because they can carry disease and then pass it on to the next crop that you plant in here. And there's no need for fertilizer. Because they are annuals and have everything they need in this uh, bulb, you don't need to fertilize them. Now, if you're planting them in the ground and you do live in a place that where they will perennialize and come back, then some fertilizer throughout the growing season is great. But for this, you don't need it at all. All right, now it's time to plant the bulbs. I'm gonna save these for a smaller pot. We'll do those in a minute. Now for bulbs in pots, uh, if you're doing one layer, you want to cram as many bulbs in as you can because you want this to be a full display in the spring. The only thing is you don't want them to be touching. You want to put them so close together without them touching because if one rots, it might make the one that it's touching rot also and it could go all the way around the pot if they're all touching. And there's also diseases that can be passed from bulb to bulb easier if they're touching. So really, if you're planting one layer, you just want about a finger width space between each one. However, we are not planting one layer in this pot because it's deep. We're going to make a tulip lasagna and that extends the blooming period. So you don't just have a one and done. And that means layering the bulbs on top of each other so that the top layer blooms first while the deeper ones take a bit longer and bloom second or maybe third if you have three layers. So you get more blooms over a longer period of time. And just in case you don't know, it's always pointy side up. So for this, we want about an inch between each bulb. And by the way, this is a mix of tulips called Tulip Triumph Purple Lady Mix. So now that we've got the first layer of bulbs planted, we're gonna fill in with another couple of inches of uh, potting soil, just so the tops of these are barely under the soil. Now we're gonna plant our next layer right on top. And you might think, well, isn't that gonna block the ones from underneath from growing up? Tulips, all bulbs really, have the ability to figure out which way is the best to the top. And if they have to go around bulbs above them, they will do that. So you don't need to worry about that at all. So we're just gonna put a layer just like we did before, about an inch apart. And again, you don't need to worry that it might be directly on top of one beneath it. Cover it with potting soil again. You can see why this is called a lasagna. And on goes the next layer. So this will be three layers in total. For that final layer, just gonna fill it up to within one inch or less. Just leave a little space for watering in case you don't get adequate rains during the winter. And kind of press it down so it firms everything in there. Now you can do this with different kinds of spring bulbs as well. You always wanna put the bigger bulbs that bloom the latest, like tulips, the deepest in the pot. The middle layer would be bulbs that bloom mid-season, like uh, daffodils, narcissus. The top layer would be the smallest bulbs that bloom the earliest, like crocus or iris reticulata. When you're looking for bulbs, if you don't mail order them, then you don't get to pick. You need to know that the larger the bulb, the bigger the bloom. And so you wanna make sure that they're large, they're firm. You want them to have the paper on them, at least on most of them, if possible. Um, that will kind of protect them a little bit. This one's only got half the paper on them. Uh, there will invariably be some that lose their little jackets, but for the most part, at least, you want most of them to have the paper around them. Now, as far as watering is concerned, you want to keep the tulips moist, but not consistently wet. 
In fact, it's better for them to be on the dry side rather than too wet. Now, before you see the sprouts emerging from the soil, if the potting mix looks really soaked during wet weather, you wanna move it into a sheltered position under a, a tree or under the eaves of a house or in an unheated greenhouse if you have one until it dries out a little bit and then they can be returned back to where they were growing. On the other hand, if you have a dry winter or early spring before the sprouts appear, a shortage of water can cause poor development or a shortening of the flowering period. One final note on keeping your bulbs safe. We've talked about gophers and deer, but squirrels and other rodents can get into your pots, dig up the bulbs and eat them. So uh, a couple of easy ways to prevent that from happening is just to cut a piece of chicken wire, uh, the same diameter as the pot, and just put it right down there on top of the soil and you can secure it with some landscape staples. Just take care uh, to not puncture the bulb as you push these in. Three or four of these around the edge should do it. You can also use chili powder or chili uh, flakes, just sprinkle them on top and that can dissuade them as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant another pot of the ones that were in the moist vermiculite. And I'm gonna keep those labeled so in a couple of months, we can see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count these and exactly how many I put in there. So it'll see if any rot more than the ones in here. Um, so in a couple of months, we know if this experiment was a success or a failure. I hope this video helped. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Share it with a gardening friend, and I'll see you next time.